Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for the Ultima Weapon in Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, the Ultima Weapon is exactly what it sounds like. It is the ultimate weapon for Sora. But what makes it so ultimate? So, first of all, it starts off with 13 strength and 13 magic. The highest any Keyblade can get, even fully upgrading all the others, they still will not reach that level of strength or magic. Aside from that, it has three very nifty little abilities. So, the first one is uh, Combo Boost and Air Combo Boost. And obviously, they are just as they sound. It increases the damage when you're on the ground or when you're in the air, proportional to the length of the combos. Now, the other one, however, is Situation Boost. And this one fills the Situation Command much quicker as you are defeating enemies which helps you get into the ultimate form even faster. And this thing is a monster. It's like, this will literally wreck anything in the game. I've got a video up of the secret optional boss, Dark Inferno, and using ultimate form, you literally tear through his massive 20 health bars in literally a minute. If, like, if you played Kingdom Hearts 2, just think, uh, just think master form. Like, well, no, think even better than Master Form. Like, this is just the ultimate weapon. Now, how'd you get it? Unfortunately, this is where it becomes a bit convoluted. So, the first thing you need to do to even start working on this is to actually, in the workshop, you need to collect a total of 58 different synthesis items so that you can actually make it to begin with. Now, getting 58 different materials is a bit of a pain. You're not going to get them very quick. You're going to be pretty much close towards the end of the game, even if you do every side quest, even if you do you know, all the treasure chests and things like that, you're still going to be near towards the end of the game before you can actually get that. Now, Aside from that, let's take a look at the actual weapon. So, in order to craft it, you need 7 Orichalcum Pluses, 2 Wellspring Crystals, 2 Lucid Crystals, and 2 Pulsing Crystals. Now, the crystals themselves are pretty straightforward. Uh, if you, like, just playing normally, you would actually get those crystals uh, as you're going through the story and things like that. However, you wouldn't get many of them through the main story. I mean, you can find a couple in chests. You might get one or two from defeating enemies and things like that. But if you actually want to make this ASAP, then you can't use any of those crystals throughout the entire game. Which, you know, it's not really worth the trade-off, considering just how easy they actually are to get and how fast they are to get. But I will uh, talk about them in just a moment because first of all, we're going to be talking about the Orichalcum Pluses. Now, you need seven for this weapon and surprise, surprise, there's only seven in the entire game. The good thing, however, is none of them are missable. Now, in order to get the first one, you need to go to the Twilight Town area and right where the Moogle shop is, Basically, every time you buy something from the Moogle shop, you will actually get a postcard. So, for example, let me just show you now. I'll just buy a regular potion. Okay, I didn't get that one that time. It is a little random, but 9 times out of 10, you do get them. There you go. See, prize postcard plus 1. Now, what you want to do with these postcards is right next to the Moogle shop in Twilight Town, there's a little post box. And you want to keep posting these, and you'll get an item each time you do that. The chance is a little low, but eventually you will get the Orichalcum Plus. Now, one easy way of doing this is I typically go for like 20 or 30 postcards and then I save my game. I post all the postcards. If I don't get the Orichalcum Plus, no problem. I reload my save and try again. That way, you know, I don't have to mess around, keep getting postcards or things like that. And it also cuts the cost down. Okay, so that's the first one. Oh, uh, excuse me. The second one is from the skiing side quest in Arondal. Well, I say side quest, it's more of a mini game. Um, now, in order to get that, you uh, actually have to get all 10 treasures for it. Uh, you can't do all 10 treasures in one run, unfortunately. You are going to have to do multiple runs. Uh, however, if you want to see uh, how to do that, look below in the description because I have a video there as well showing all 10 locations and how to get them very, very easily. Now... Uh, Orichalcum number three is in a chest in the Caribbean. 
and again there will be a link down in the description below with every chest location in the Caribbean. The fourth one is from a chest in the final world. Now when I say final world I don't actually mean like the last area of the game. There's actually an area called the final world and it's the only chest in there so knock yourself out for that. Although if you do need a guide to find it I will also place that video down in the description. Now the uh, fifth one is defeating Omega with the gummy ship. This is one of the optional uh, super bosses, so to speak. Uh, I do have a video on how to create an overpowered gummy ship and also how to completely annihilate Omega. And again, they are going to be down in the description. Uh, this one is going to be a little troublesome though. Um, you know, I mean, it is going to be uh, a, a bit of a pain unless you've actually spent a little time leveling your gummies up. But all in all, it's not overly difficult or very time consuming so quite straightforward to get really now the sixth one is by doing all seven of the flan mini games now the flan mini games are a little tricky in what you have to do however once again there's going to be a video down in the description with how to actually earn a perfect score on all of them now let's take a look at what scores you actually need for the flans so basically, you kind of need sort of like twenty to twenty-five thousand in each mini game. The one, uh, the one time you don't, however, is the strawberry flan. Now for that one, I'm not entirely sure what the exact score is. I think it's around fifteen thousand, but I got it with seventeen thousand just fine. You know, you've got the high score for that particular flan when you actually learn an ability at the end of the mission for it. So as long as you learn that ability, you can move on safely because you know you. You've got enough for it and finally for the seventh and last story calcum plus you need to find 80 lucky emblems now again well i'm not going to link these videos in the description uh, you i will link my playlist though because they are all there i've got guides for all the lucky emblems in every world so you can just quickly peruse them find the ones you're missing and you know, it's all done that way. Then you've got your seven Orichalcum Pluses. Next, we are going to move on to the Wellspring Crystals. Now, the Wellspring Crystal is a very, very, very important item. And chances are, you've actually used the ones you got from the main story and uh, throughout. So, you're going to have to farm them. Now, Wellspring Crystals are used in a lot of things. So, you're going to need a lot. So, a good way of farming them is Battlegate number 12, because Battlegate number 12 lets you earn a whopping 300 plus crystals per hour, which means you can literally get the two crystals you need here in one fight. It's very, very common to earn five crystals per fight in Battlegate 12. Uh, if you're unsure where it is, there will again be a link down in the description below for that. Now, for the Lucid Crystal, uh, this one, again, we are going to be using Battlegates to farm these. Now, you can get the crystal itself from Battlegate number 10. It is a little rare, so you might have to uh, actually do the Battlegate, you know, like three, four times for you to get the two crystals. Um, if you want to actually move along the route of crafting the crystals, uh, you can also do that. You need the Wellspring Crystals, Lucid Gem, Lucid Stone, and Lucid Shards. You can get the Lucid Gem from Battlegate 10 as well. It is a little more common than the crystal. Uh, however, chances are, you know, you're probably going to get the two crystals by the time you actually get the four gems needed here. Uh, if you are going to go for the crafting route, though, you can also get the. Uh, I can't get my words out. You can also get the stone and the shards from Battlegate number seven as well. They give you, you know, pretty much five to ten per fight, so pretty easy to rack them up there. To be honest, uh, Battlegate ten is in the uh, Caribbean, and Battlegate seven is. Oh, I can't remember. Battlegate seven is uh, Kingdom of Coronia. Oh, almost forgot that. Uh, Battlegate 12, by the way, for Wellspring Crystals is in San Francisco. Now, moving on to Pulsing Crystal. Now, Pulsing Crystal, unfortunately, there's really no quick way to stock up on these. 
Um, you can do Battlegate 11 in San Francisco, which does drop them. However, they can be a little rare. Um, you know what I mean? You might get one per run, you might get two per run, or you might go five runs without getting any. Unfortunately, that is the only place that, 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 yeah, that they will actually drop in terms of Battlegate. Now, if you actually want to craft the crystals, however, and this is the route I strongly suggest going for, simply because it is much, much faster. So, you need to do Battlegate 2 for the gems to craft it, which, and sorry, Battlegate 2 will actually give you quite a lot of gems as well. So, you know, there is always that. Uh, in terms of the shards and stones, you want to use Battlegate 6. Now, going for the stones and the shards, you will pretty much rack up 10, 15 stones and shards very, very quickly from just one or two fights. And there you go, guys. That is how you get all the materials required to forge the Ultima weapon. Now, it is just a shame, however, that the Ultima weapon can't actually be upgraded. It does start off at the maximum level of 10. So, why is the Ultima weapon so amazing? Well, let's take a look at the Shot Lock ability first of all. Now, this is an awesome ability which literally obliterates anything on the screen. As you can see, everything just died instantly. Now, let's take a quick look at the Ultima form. As long as I can get it before this fight's over. Luckily enough, though, because of its ability, you know, it really shouldn't take me too long to get it. And there we go. So, let's take a look at Ultima form. And as you can see, you know, it just teleports around, slaughtering everything in sight simply by mashing X. And its finish ability is also just as amazing, which I'll show you right now as soon as we get into this fight. And just use that to finish everything off. And there we go. See, that is why the Ultima Weapon is so amazing. But guys, that's where I'm going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. And of course, if you're new around here, then hit that subscribe button. And also, remember to check the playlist link down below in the description because I am making guides for literally everything Kingdom Hearts 3 related. So if you need help with treasure chest locations, lucky emblem locations, or things like that, I, well, chances are I have a video for it down below. And of course, if you feel like really, really, really helping the channel out, then feel free to become a member by clicking join just below the video, or there's going to be a link in the description as well. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.